Uh, hi, hi, everybody. Uh, so, I guess we'll get going. On uh, so this uh, session is about badass domains, um, which you can see if you go to badass dot domains. Um, dot, dot, dot domains is an ICANN TLD, so you could see it on any uh, with any resolvers. But yeah. Uh, I guess for this talk, I mean, I, 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 I guess like a an outline for it would be just like I'll do like kind of an intro about like why why we did it, and then um, and then like get we'll get into the how the how we did it, and then Kiba and Matt can give more details about like how they helped and stuff with that. But yeah, I mean, just to start off, this was one of the most enjoyable uh, and satisfying projects I've done in a in a long time. Like. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, it just felt, it was just so, what, 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 you know, I, it was just such a cool thing to build, but at the same time, like it also opened up all this, this world of possibilities, which is just like super exciting. And not only that, but like these guys, man, I have to like give huge thanks to Kiva and Matt, man. They are awesome. <laughs> like Matt, I mean, anybody who knows, you know, who's been in Handshake knows Matt is awesome and it's, he's a great great guy to work with and everything and Kiba I I didn't know Kiba but he came out of nowhere and like just helped I mean I mean so much help so thanks so much for for that you guys um yeah it was awesome to work with you guys I mean it was just like it was yeah like the last two weeks we were like everybody was just like working on this and it just all came together it's pretty cool so but yeah and it, I mean the cool thing about badass is like it's free. It's like out there. <laughs> it has a life of its own. Like it's not controlled by anyone. Um, you know, like dot dot at ETH, uh, you know, has key holders, you know, so it's control, you know, it, it people can control it. Uh, and, um, you know, I can is controlled and, uh, you know, like, but like, this is like, I don't know if it's like, it's just out there and has a life of its own from now on. And, and maybe it's not the best version of, you know what's but it's kind of just like to show what what the p possibilities are and like from here on out you know there'll be I, I just think there'll be a lot of innovation on it which will be really cool to check out but yeah so so why why did we do uh badass domains um i thought it might be good to answer this from like two different perspectives one is um from like a domainer because i think in the crowd like from the people i've seen here it's like there's domainers. There's a lot of, there's people who are more into the current domain world. Like, um, and then there's crypto people, a lot of crypto people too. And I think they might not like both of them might have questions of why, why would you do a <laughs> badass domains? And so like for, for the, from the domainer standpoint, I'll, I'll, I'll just like the domainers here. So, um, you know, like having it decentralized, uh, you know, it has the same things about like, uh, ENS and stuff like, ownership like you truly own like on ICANN you don't you know you you rent you you uh you know anybody can get there's middlemen in the way uh everywhere like registrar people who work at the registrar people who work at the registry registry ICANN like all there's a, there's a lot of people who can take it away from you so uh there's a, there's the ownership fact factor and then there's like just being able to program it you know it's like domains are digital assets uh so um you know, uh, it's nice to have them on a blockchain where they can, you know, you can actually own it and have it programmable and stuff. But like another thing is um, the thing that excites me from a domainer standpoint is, uh, well, and also like security and stuff, you know, like certificate authorities and stuff. But the thing, one of the things that I didn't realize at first, but really excites me from a, like a domainer standpoint is um, just breaking down the floodgates of the TLD space because I can, you know, I know they're just trying to be careful and like safe and everything like that, but I think it's turned into this huge, it just seems like it's turned into this huge, huge, slow, 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 slow moving thing where it's like impossible to get a TLD now. Like you need millions of dollars and you have to wait years and all this stuff. It's just so, it's just such a drag. Okay. And so this like busts, like breaks open the gates <laughs> and like, I think it's going to lead to like with, with this badass domain. It's like it's just going to there's going to be a lot of uh, freedom and innovation that comes from opening up the the TLD gates. So, uh, 
I, so that's, I guess, from the, the domainers, like just to let you guys, like from, from a domain standpoint. Now from the crypto side, I think, um, you know, there might be some uh, hesitation on the second level. I think I've heard people say, you know, what's the, what's the, what, what, why do we need a second, second level domains? And, you know, we don't, you don't need it for, you know, uh, for some, for some TLDs, you might not choose to have a, a second level on there, but, but I do think it's very important. And I think uh, because, you know, it extends the namespace, like it, it uh, really extends the namespace. So like you, there's a limit, there's a limit to the number of names, like, and the, and the, and the purpose of a naming system is, you know, to, to, to make memorable, like easy, easy to read and memorable names, you know, be able to convert them to something that's really hard, like IP addresses or like wallet addresses or something like that. So there's a limit to the number of memorable, like good names that you have on the TLD side. But when you break open, when you add the second level, like it hugely extends that. And like, uh, that's what one reason I think it's really important. I mean, I think also like Handshake, you know, what I love, another thing I love about Handshake is it's like, it's just the decentralized root zone, like one simple problem, like one, like just mission. It's a decentralized and secure root zone. That's it. It's not like ENS, which is like trying to, you know, like, at, you know, oh, I'm not going to put down ENS. We, we use DNS. I like ENS, <laughs> but like, you know, it's not like other things that are trying to solve everything or like, you know, it's like focus on one thing, make, you know, everything, all the code that goes into the core, you know, like, like everything should be about that mission, making a decentralized and secure root zone. And and then, so once you have that foundation, you can build on top of it. You can build, you know, things on top of that strong foundation, which is what makes badass domains so cool is that it's anchored in that foundation of handshake. Whereas like, you know, dot F and like, um, Namecoin or other things like aren't necessarily in that. Like, so, um, so yeah, I mean, I think, I personally think that the killer apps of Handshake are going to take in, they're going to, there's going to, some of, some of the killer apps of Handshake are going to be at the second level. Like they're going to be involved, like the second level is going to be involved. Second level domains are going to be involved in some of the killer apps of Handshake. Um, and I mean, like, for example, I mean, this is just kind of a, an example, I don't know if this is killer app status yet, but like .c, like I'm watching the registrations on .c names right now and it's going crazy. <laughs> like it's like a chart, like just going straight up like that. And uh, you know, I don't know, like you can speculate as to why, I don't know, <laughs> like the, uh, there's, uh, but like something's happening there. Something's, you know, you can't ignore it or you can't like pretend it's not happening. Something's happening there. So, uh, but yeah, so anyway, the, the reason we did this, uh, or, well, I wanted to do this uh, badass, de decentralized second level domains is because we, we built with park.io, we built like a registry system. So we did a more centralized, um, a centralized second level dom uh, system, which is what they, Daddy, if they wanted to, like it would be really easy to plug in and start selling .c domains, for example, or anything from Namebase that, you know, anything that's hooked into the registry system at Namebase. So there's advantages to that, but it's centralized. So I wanted to see what would be a cool decentralized solution. So that is that is why, um, that's pretty much why I thought badass domains would be a cool idea. <laughs> so now, uh, so yeah, I, uh, I don't know if you guys want to add anything on that before we get into that. I'd like to jump wow. in a, a little bit on the story too, because um, Mike uh, Carson was really obsessed with the second level, decentralized second level domains idea. And we had a, a sub channel on Telegram where people kept bringing up this, I think, uh, this idea of a decentralized subdomain. Um, Fernando Fauci was in there, Brandon Dees was in there. People would um, bring it up in the in the dev chat and we'd take them into the second level domain channel. Um, and and I, I am one of the people that was telling Mike that this is a silly idea. Like we already have decentralized top level domains. Like if you want a decentralized name, like that's what Handshake did. We just launched that. Like it's it's happening, right? That's where it is. But I get this idea of wanting the subdomains and how important that is too. And also um, like my background as a musician, like artists love naming stuff. Like we just love naming things. And the dot is part of our culture now, this.com, pepsi.com, coke.org. You know what something is by, by how there's two words. So Handshake is bringing this one label URL 
into you know uh, the zeitgeist but people still want to have like a joey dot badass obviously like i am a dot badass or or something like that or like dot c if you write a program in c having a dot c so i get that subdomains are important and the other anecdote that i have is that um we were speaking to an investor and he was about to buy a tld but the deal was that the original owner got to keep some of the subdomains, which is an interesting concept. And Fernando Fauci described it as buying a building or selling a building, but getting to keep one of the apartments or something. And like, this is technology. This is new technology. It's blockchain. That seems like something we should be able to do. But on Handshake, like that's not really how it works. You can't divide up the second level space on the blockchain. If you transfer a name to somebody, they have complete control. Um, but it seems like that should be something that we want to do. So the idea of decentralized subdomains, there were a lot of ideas on on how to do it, censorship resistance, decentralization on the second level. There were ideas about um, side chains and um, just all kinds of, and like separate blockchains or what if each TLD had its own blockchain? Um, what if there was like a two-way peg side chain? And as someone who's been watching Bitcoin news for many years, like we've been through the side chain discussion, like a lot of people propose stuff for side chains and we didn't really get a decentralized side chain yet. It hasn't really happened. Um, not the two-way peg, but, but anyway, so like there were a lot of imaginative ideas that I was kind of like, ah, you know, this is clever, but like, I'm telling you, I've heard people discuss this already and this is probably how it's going to turn out. Um, and I actually spoke to some, some very smart people who were involved in the development of Handshake and I'm like, can we do this? Can we do it? Like, what if we use some of the Handshake namespace to do second level domains instead of top level domains? And most of the responses I got were the same as my initial reaction, which is decentralized second level domains. Like why? Um, but then there are these important use cases. And the, the obstacle to a decentralized anything is, you know, you need some consensus system. And especially if you want it to be decentralized, that means there has to be multiple verifiers, miners or proof of stake or, or something like that. There has to be some way that if one party censors you, another party won't. And that data is consensus. And so, you know, it's funny that we ended up using Ethereum. Um, we ended up using an entire other consensus layer too. And this is one of the reasons why I thought decentralized subdomains were going to be so hard and perhaps so silly is because I'm like, well, we already are working on this decentralized consensus system called Handshake. If you want to do a DSLD, you're going to need a whole other consensus system to process who wins that auction, who gets, who actually owns a name, you know? Um, and so, yeah, Ethereum is, is a great place to do that or anything that's Ethereum compatible. Um, there's tons of blockchains out there. I don't know about tons, but there are many Ethereum killers, just Ethereum Classic for one, or like, or um, Flare, or, or even Blockstack, uh, Blockstack, Rootstock, um, lots of other blockchains that still use Solidity and stuff like that. And they can all be a, a extension. Um, the problem is that you need to get the users to verify all that consensus data also. And that's maybe an obstacle we can get into um, later. But yeah, that's, I just wanted to share that extra part of the story. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. The cool thing about badass is like all the subdomains are tokenized. So now you can do all these things with the subdomains, like the website that's hosted at a subdomain can check if someone owns uh, something within badass to be able to accept, uh, be able to access that website and things like that. So the way that badass was created, um, you can do like all these other cool programmatic features, uh, which I think is like a really cool feature of it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of that stuff we didn't realize until, you know, we got more into it and it's like, wow, this opens up a lot of possibility, a lot of cool things that can happen from this. And and Badass does things that not really, that some users, uh, like it does extra things. We're not just, like the fact that the name Badass on Handshake is locked is awesome. And the fact that the Badass registry on Ethereum is locked is awesome. But with the same plugin and uh, interface, you can you don't have to lock anything. You can just take your regular old handshake name and and use ENS as your name server instead of having to run bind um, on an IP address and do it like that. You could just use the ENS, get a name on ENS, and, and use it as a decentralized storage solution. Um, and the plugin can extend to all kinds of other other ways to do that. Like Footnote, for example, a lot of people have already used Footnote or Nomad. Um, I'm pretty sure that protocol has a subdomain or like a uh, a name server function that's that's you know decentralized, um, and they just need a way to point the handshake data at it, and this is you know one way to do that. Kiba, it seems like they're saying in the chat they want some, they would like some examples. Yeah, I I, th I thought that example you mentioned, I didn't, I, I never thought of that, but that's really cool. Like you'd have to, like for somebody to visit the website, you could ch check that they. Yeah. So. 
I'm like really into the whole like community tokenization space within Ethereum. So there's like a lot of this like gated content where you either have to own a certain amount of like ERC20 tokens, which are just like fully exchangeable, or you have to own an NFT to be able to access some other NFT, which represents content. So there's that use case. Um, but these are, they're just like, they're tokens. They can represent, they represent this thing, but you can do anything with that thing because it's just like all programming. So like whatever you want, you can create. Um, I was, I like proposed kind of like ingest, but that like we create like a badass DAO where you um, would like NFT mine with badass domains. So like you take these domains that you bought on the dot badass registry and you would like stick them into a contract and you like earn tokens back, um, which they're not gonna do because it's a stupid idea. But it's like, <laughs> just like an example of something that you can do with all these tokens. Like they're just, they are a thing and you can make that thing do anything you want. Um, and especially like you can create other systems built on top of that. So literally, because we block, uh, locked up everything for like the handshake topical domain and the ENS registry, um, the only thing that's really controlled is the registrar. I don't know if you already like burned those keys, Mike. But like right now, I think the only thing that he can actually control is just like the price of domains. So like, okay, we can only access this like one like feedback loop. So like, what can we do with just the pricing um, by like creating this token? And then we can like have the pricing kind of like allow people with the token to get coupons because we can create like another smart contract that like accepts the token, but then the DAO like puts ETH from the registrar that from the actual sales, like you can just do anything, just your imagination, um, which is the great thing about Ethereum is like, there's just like all the stuff that's already built. And then you can just like plug in your little thing into there. Yeah. So I, uh, maybe it's worth talking about like how we did uh, some of this stuff. And like, I guess it's broken the, the two sides of the, you know, the two sides, like what Kibo was working on was like, like the Ethereum side, like forking like ENS and uh, like helping like deploy and verify the code and all that. And uh, also the ENS app, which is the web interface that uh, makes it easier to register and manage the domains, which you see it if you go to badass.domains. And then the other side of it was like on the handshake side and the resolver side, like how do you see a dot badass domain and uh um matt did all that did the plugin for uh a plugin called handover uh, which we open source you can see uh, on github um and uh yeah it's awesome because it you also made it so that like it was the first resolvable dot eth domains which is really awesome but uh yeah i don't know kiba is there did you want to uh talk about how you did that or like like what like how like the how part of that <laughs> yeah, um, like as you were saying yesterday, apparently it's like ENS is super easy to fork. They're re they're a really great smart contract system. Like they really thought through it. And the reason why I could help you so easily was because like I had started doing research into ENS a couple weeks before, and I read all of their proposals for standards to the Ethereum community, um, which they have like eight of them or something for like all the different types of resolvers for the actual ENS registry. So there's like a ton of documentation about the ENS system. So it's pretty easy. I mean, like the actual code and like functionality is like not super well documented, but the overall idea and concept is very well documented for anyone that wants to do their own. Um, and then, yeah, it's just smart contracts to just did a Git clone. And then I think I wrote the script that you used, um, which I've, I've moved into like another repo now and it's like a little bit more robust and it automatically deploys like a resolver for you um, and everything now. And yeah, if you like run that script, basically what the ENS registry does is it, um, allows you to like take some domain and it generates a hash of that like actual string. So like, dot badass becomes like some kind of abstract hash. So that's you store in a smart contract because you pay for all the data. Um, and then from there, it's like a tree structure. So like all the subdomains are hashed based on the parent hash of the top level domain. Um, and yeah, that's how the registries work is you give the top level domain access uh, controlled by a smart contract and that smart contract now owns the top of the domain. So right, it's like not owned by uh, Mike Carson, it's owned by the smart contract. And then that smart contract can just do whatever it wants with it. And in this case, we've set it up to accept Ethereum and then it will give you whatever subdomain you want underneath that top of the domain. Um, and that's also one of the ENS contracts that we forked. So everything was just kind of already there. Um, we just replaced .eth with .badass and <laughs> Actually, the smart contracts are probably the easiest part. It was really the web app where all of these things were like hard coded. Um, but 
luckily when I did it with uh, with Badass, I trend changed everything over to like environment variables. So anyone can just change those environment variables and the app should work for the new top of the demo. Yeah, they, they had hard coded like dot dot F into all like even the like the modules and stuff that you have to install. So yeah, we had to change it in a lot of places there. But um yeah, that was I guess that was the hardest part doing the the web the web interface. And we we ran into some issues where uh like some of the code hadn't been pushed to <laughs> like the code I think the code for the web interface had uh was relying on updated uh like a the latest version of the public resolver which we um didn't so basically we had to I had to deploy that again which cost like another six hundred dollars in gas fees or something like that yeah. <laughs> And the good but, uh, thing for everyone is like, I'm trying to create the system. The good thing about like what Zipkin did is that um, it allows you to like formally de delegate your domain's namespace to another name, like your name server to another namespace. Um, and so like what I was doing for my project, which was allowing you to port handshake to any um, other blockchain, basically, I was just doing like a text uh, record with like some kind of nonce challenge. But then when Zip can make this plugin and this like now it's like a formal handshake improvement protocol, whatever proposal. Um, that that makes like my job way easier actually for like doing my project. So ideally, um, when I get this like cross network handshake thing going, no one has to deploy any smart contracts. So there'll only be like one set of ENS records or ENS smart contracts, just the registry, not like subdomain registrars. They'll still have to do that as a top level domain, but it'll definitely save you a ton of money on gas. Um, because like the most expensive thing is definitely like the ERC seven twenty one like NFT token contract I think, which probably costs like the most money. Um, and no one will have to do that. Cool. So yeah, oh go ahead. I was go just going to say how hilarious it is that how many times we have to say badass, <laughs> and, and and the other one of course is that is that the first ENS name to have an uh, EIP eleven fifty eight. Um, data set, EIP 1158 is the actual standard for actual DNS wire format DNS records on ENS, which they don't have an interface for. So it's very, very possible that Mike Carson, a handshake developer, was the first person to add actual DNS records to ENS to the name fucking fucker dot <laughs> And so all this time, all my tests are like, God, is fucking fucker working? <laughs> Can I resolve fucking fucker, fucker right now? Or is the plugin working? Let's check fucking fucker. <laughs> so uh, I mean, this is Mike, Mike Carson's personality on this project. It's great. Uh, yeah, that was fun. So yeah, Matt, do you want to get into how, like what you did on the, the handover stuff? Yeah, sure. Um, there's a lot to talk about. I'm, I, I'll try to screen share if I can. And I'll show, okay, can you guys see um, this uh, test provably locked? Okay, here we come. I see it's, yeah. okay. So th this is the, the first step. This isn't even a plugin yet. This is, um, these handshake addresses here. Can you guys see this? This looks like a long handshake address. That's um, an encoded script. And what the script says is that anybody can renew um, the name saved by this address, but nobody can do anything else to it. It, it is a it is an address that does not require a signature um, doesn't require a public key or a private key, um, but it only lets you do one thing, which is renew, and anybody can renew. Um, and um, what's interesting about this is back in the testnet days, I thought this was a bug, and I, I talked to Joseph Poon about it. I'm like, do you realize that you can send a name to a script where like anybody can renew, and then the whole idea of requiring renewals every two years on Handshake, like this is the cheat code right here. If you guys don't want to pay your renewal fee or you're afraid you might lose your key, like... I don't think this is a vulnerability. I talked about it with a project founder. We decided not to change anything. Like, um, you know, you, you don't have you don't have to have your own private key to renew. You can make it so anybody can. It's this extra step, but it's a little weird, it's a little funky and stuff. But like, it's it's there. It's in the protocol, and and hopefully it doesn't change because now we found a really good use case for it. It's possible in, in the future we soft fork this out for whatever reason. But anyway, so it's just kind of interesting. So the first thing we did is we sent transferred and finalized. Or no, first you set the badass records, and I'll show you what those look like, and then we lock the name badass on handshake in this way. It's a name that um, nobody owns. Nobody owns the name badass, um, but anybody can renew it. Um, maybe I'll renew it tomorrow and, and Mike will renew it next year or something like that. Um, okay, and then so that's cool. One of the cool things. And then 
HIP-5 is the uh, proposal that Mike Carson and I wrote to, um, to, to make this standard. So when we're talking about decentralized subdomains, what do we do? How do we tell the handshake resolver to look at a completely separate consensus system um, to get some name data? And uh, encourage people to read HIP-5 if you, if, if you, if you want to. It's kind of interesting. Um, so there's there's two supported standards now. There's .eth and .underscore eth. And both of these TLDs are blocked in the handshake resolver. You can't actually use them in any way, even if you could win them in an auction, which you can't. They can't be used. So that's why we can sort of soft fork our own little function into them. Um, and so this text area here, this is what the NS record looks like for, um, for .badass on handshake. Uh, don't forget, this record can never be changed. Um, and it's an Ethereum address followed by underscore ETH. And so it, normally a DNS resolver would look at that and be like, oh, I need to go ask underscore ETH about this weird second level domain and then eventually get an IP address. Um, of course, no recursive resolver is going to be able to do that. So the handover plugin lives inside the HSD root name server. And I don't want to get too technical, but this diagram looks kind of interesting. And maybe you, you guys can just kind of get a quick idea of how the story works that when the recursive resolver asks the root zone, uh, hey, I'm looking for you know certified dot badass. Um, the root zone was a sure, well, I don't have the A record for that, but here's a referral to this weird Ethereum address dot underscore ETH. And I know the recursive resolver isn't going to be able to deal with that. So the plugin actually is in the middle there, intercepts the record as it's being resolved and says, oh, I know that this is an Ethereum. This is a HIP5 record because it ends in underscore ETH. So it redirects the, the lookup to the Ethereum contract, gets the answer from Ethereum, and then returns that. Um, and it was tricky to get this work with to get this to work with Unbound and Bind and um, BNS, which is JJ's uh, DNS resolver written in JavaScript. Um, and we had to do some tricks, and there's some limitations to it, and I'm not sure everything's going to work forever. But we got certified dot badass to work. Um, and th this can also the plugin can also um, resolve regular ETH names like fucking fucker dot eth or humbly dot eth, um, that which uh, which which bypass uh, handshake altogether. And this is kind of one thing we touched on yesterday. Mike was talking to Brantley about how Handshake is a root zone and Ethereum has, its uh, ENS is not restricted to subdomains, okay? It, it has some subdomains like ETH. And um, this is a way to resolve ETH names. So without even having to do what Badass did or without locking your name on Handshake or without forking ENS, um, you, you can you could use the actual like official ENS uh, and, and resolve it from HSD with this plugin. Um, was that too complicated or not complicated enough or any questions? <laughs> that was good. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot. I mean, it's awesome. There's a lot of cool things. I mean, not only on the handshake side and stuff, but like to make the first resolvable, you, you made the first resolvable dot ETH names that you can resolve in a browser with DNS. It's pretty cool. I know brownie points or the bonus points. Um, I, I was thinking about it for like the last couple of days um, as I was like expecting to talk to ENS or like hear ENS at this conference. And I think I found a way to get badass domains to be resolved from the traditional, like the normal ENS system, which would then make badass domains resolvable from Brave browsers and Opera browsers natively, which would be pretty cool. But I still have to like write the smart contracts and figure it out. But I'm pretty sure it's possible. Ah. Um, but yeah. Wow. So cool. Nice. Uh, I see some. So, do you want to try to hit some of these questions or? Uh, sure. Why on Ethereum not Polkadot or Car or Carfano? Maybe that means Cardano. We can do it. We can do any of those. The next thing I uh, I think I want to add is Namecoin. Um, oh, by the way, uh, Nick Johnson, lead developer of ENS, and and Jeremy Rand, uh, lead developer of Namecoin, both very available on IRC and were super helpful. Are, are still very helpful. Nick Johnson was very helpful. Um, you know, learning about ENS and stuff like that. So that was um, just a shout out to, to that guy. He's great. Um, hmm. The top level domains that control the second level. Okay. Because the top level domain controls it. Okay. Thanks to all three. We'll pro oh, we'll promise you face with browser compatibility. This is another good point because the, the idea of what I'd, I'd love the handover plugin to use Ethereum and Cardano and Polkadot and Ethereum Classic and, and, and Flare and Namecoin, but, and then we can, people can resolve their subdomains and whatever weird smart contracts they come up with on all these other consensus systems. Every time you add one of those, the user needs to run that. Like the handover plugin right now uses the Infura API. Um, it's trivial to just set it up to use an Ethereum full node. But if, if badass domains... Um, 
become really popular and everybody wants to resolve them all the time, everyone's got to run a handshake node. Oh, and by the way, also an Ethereum node, if you want to be truly decentralized and trustless. And so every time we add another thing like Namecoin, okay, now you're running three full nodes, um, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> Good, but Ethereum data is super available, right? It's Yeah. Someone asked, is the second level domain also decentralized? Um, and yeah, like you definitely own it. No one can take it away from you. Um, you just have to renew it. And then yeah, it will always be yours. Johnny says one more question. Who wants to ask one more question? Mm. Badass as a server. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be we'll be, we'll be hanging around uh, in the in the lobby, right, at the tables and stuff at the at the conference. If people have more questions, and we're all available on Telegram and and like that, so um, I think we can yeah. reach over. Any final words, Mike Carson? Dot badass. Uh, no, I mean I'm just excited. I'm, I'm just super excited about what the possibilities that are. I, I can't wait to see what Kiba's going to do next with this stuff. And like, it's going to, yeah, it's going to, I think it's going to be cool. So anyway, thanks. Thanks everybody. Thanks Mike. Thanks Kiba. Great work guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Super fun. Mm -hmm.